What's up? I'm Nature Hacker from teethpowder.com and today we're going to talk about T3 mineralization. And this is going to be a big topic. Um, there's going to be many videos in this string on T3 mineralization. I'm not necessarily going to go um, topic by topic for each video. Um, I'm, I definitely will do some topical videos, but most of it I'm just going to be talking about process marine mineralization and um, just uh, by watching all of these videos you're going to learn a lot about how um, teeth work I guess. Um, so I want to start off with a misconception and that misconception is that teeth sensitivity is a sign of thin enamel and that actually is not necessarily true. The teeth have pores in them. These pores are normal, they're natural and um, so the the teeth uh, can sense hot and cold um, but the problem is oversensitivity and that is actually caused by um, bacteria and they are anaerobic bacteria that cause the sensitivity um, it's not thin enamel necessarily um, it is just an infection with anaerobic bacteria and these bacteria typically can live inside the tooth actually inside the the pulp inside and um, one uh, thing that they can do these anaerobic bacteria is cause craze lines you might see these little uh, lines on your teeth that look like little cracks kind of vertical cracks in your tooth enamel and this is actually from these bacteria living inside and pressurizing the inside of the tooth and that causes these little hairline cracks, uh, craze lines in your teeth. So these are anaerobic bacteria. Um, they are gas producing bacteria. That's why they cause that expansion uh, because they're producing gas inside your tooth and basically expanding it from the inside. Um, so, um, you know, remineralization helps with the craze lines, but before that you need to actually kill these bacteria so they're not uh, continuously um, blowing up your teeth basically. So what this bacteria is um, anaerobic. Uh, it can be killed mostly with peppermint essential oil. Also cinnamon essential oil also uh, can work for these. Uh, combination of the two definitely works really well. Teeth powder uh, has cinnamon, peppermint, and a whole host of other essential oils for other bacteria that do other things in the mouth. So um, that's what's going on with teeth sensitivity. So you want to, if you have sensitive teeth, you could try using a product like teeth powder. You could take some, or, you know, you could take some, and or, you could take some peppermint essential oil, kind of put a few drops in your mouth with some water and just swish it around. And if you do this maybe once a day, this will keep the anaerobic bacteria under control and should uh, lessen and mitigate uh, teeth sensitivity. Um, so, uh, that's that's that misconception uh, and that it's not necessarily about remineralization that's going to fix um, sensitive teeth. I know uh, some scientific papers out there, the remineralization uh, block these pores in the teeth, which I don't necessarily think is a great uh, idea and it's probably not a natural remineralization, probably doesn't block the pores in the teeth um, because I think these pores are probably needed. but. Um, but they can block these pores and that does help with sensitivity a little bit but you're not getting to the root of the problem and the root of the problem is the anaerobic bacteria so you just have to combat that every day and you know we've learned um i'd say the biggest reason uh, why the length of life has increased over the past century or so is because of teeth uh, oral hygiene is teeth brushing is people actually killing all the bacteria in their mouth to some extent they're not killing all of it I'd say teeth powder um, is the best in terms of that aspect of anything uh, that's ever existed in the oral health category. Um, but uh, in general, people understand that they need to kill bacteria in their mouth uh, in order to have proper oral health. Um, that hasn't spread to the gut yet. People still don't believe that it's best to kill bacteria in the gut. That will happen and that will bring our lifespans up another, say, 20 to 30 years. Uh, you know, just as oral health brought up our lifespan about 20 or 30 years. Um, but it, it, people at least know that killing bacteria in the mouth is a good thing. So that's great. Essential oils do this exceptionally well with zero side effects. Uh, so they, it can be done daily and that's how it should be done. 
um, every day killing off all these bacteria in our mouth. Um, so, uh, in terms of teeth remineralization, um, you know, one thing I found that's really uh, good is peroxide. So, if you peroxide, if you add peroxide molecules onto things, they will tend to stick to teeth enamel. And if you're using a molecule like tetracalcium phosphate, and you um, add a peroxide to it by just <clears throat> taking the powder and just letting it sit in some hydrogen peroxide and then evaporating out the hydrogen or peroxide with a fan or something um, in a shallow dish, for example, or a pan, <clears throat> the peroxide molecules will attach to your uh, thing. So if that's tetracalcium phosphate, you know, or even if it's calcium oxide, which is extremely basic, uh, extremely alkaline, I don't uh, suggest you use calcium oxide or magnesium oxide, you know, it turns into magnesium peroxide, but these peroxides, I think, can stick to enamel much better, and just from my own experience, but I came up with that because I've read scientific papers that have alluded to the fact that um, peroxides uh, help things to stick to enamel, and I think the paper that I read years ago um, was talking about um, that saliva kind of naturally peroxidizes the calcium in it and helps to remineralize heat that way. So that's how I came up with tetracalcium phosphate peroxide, uh, the first ever person to peroxidize something like that. Um, and, uh, you know, tetracalcium phosphate also, I think, helps with remineralization. Um, octocalcium phosphate helps remineralization. You can uh, peroxidize octocalcium phosphate. I've just found that it, it seems to really accept the peroxidation to a higher degree than the tetracalcium phosphate to the sense that it's too high in peroxide if you peroxidize octocalcium phosphate. So I tend to stay away from peroxidizing octocalcium phosphate. Um, that's also a great remineralization and you can find uh, how to make these things like tetracalcium phosphate and octocalcium phosphate. You can find that on naturehacker.org. If you scroll all the way down uh, to the bottom, you will see teeth as like a little uh, tag and it will show all of the posts that I've ever made on TEEF and basically all the open source inventions that go into the TEEF powder product. Um, so there's that. Um, and then there's um, amorphous calcium phosphate and this is sort of the holy grail of remineralization. I haven't quite achieved yet. I'm currently at alpha tricalcium phosphate which is you know, it's getting closer to amorphous. Alpha is, um, you know, it's the molecular structure and how easy it is to dissolve it. Amorphous calcium phosphate is the easiest to dissolve. Alpha is second easiest to dissolve. And then beta, which is the normal tricalcium phosphate, is the third easiest to dissolve. So if you're just using beta tricalcium phosphate, that's actually the base material that tea powder is made out of. That's not really going to add much to remineralization because that tricalcium phosphate just doesn't dissolve. It's not going to um, do anything to your teeth. It's just going to be inert. But alpha tricalcium phosphate actually does dissolve to some extent, and so that can help remineralize the teeth. Amorphous is the holy grail. Um, it's virtually impossible to make it with physical means. I'm making all of these things with an HHO torch, and I'm actually melting the mineral, kind of welding the powder together, I basically make like cookie type wafers and then I just melt those with the torch um, to make these different powders. Um, but in terms of amorphous calcium phosphate, it's extremely hard uh, to make it that way. I mean, you'd have to cool it, I think at like a million degrees a second or something. It's just incredible. You would, you'd have to flame spray it onto like, an, a liquid nitrogen cooled piece of metal or something you know like psh, you're just making you're spraying a jet of uh, um, you know like nano uh, tricalcium phosphate heating it up to 2000 degrees Celsius and then it hitting a liquid nitrogen cooled copper plate or something like that in order to cool it fast enough to make actual amorphous calcium phosphate so it's extremely impractical to be able to make that um, that way. But there are wet methods of making amorphous calcium phosphate. And I've kind of, uh, I, I think, adapted a method I've read in a scientific paper. That's also on naturehacker.org. Scroll all the way down to the little teeth 
um, link there and you should be able to, once you go to that teeth link, uh, you should have all my teeth papers. You can just control F and search for amorphous or something and uh, you should find it that way. Um, so yeah, that's that's uh, how to make some remineralization ingredients. There's other ing uh, types of ingredients out there. Um, they're typically not good. They're either made with toxins, you know, in terms of, you know, mainstream uh, companies working on remineralization, they're either working with toxic things or things that are just kind of hijacking nature, like um, zinc or something, you know, that, that will attach to your tooth enamel. You don't want zinc to attach your tooth enamel. Zinc actually works as um, a detriment to... Uh, remineralization and not necessarily in a bad way but it kind of it makes it harder for the remineralization process to happen let's put it that way it kind of it blocks remineralization so i'm saying you kind of want this buffer you want it to be blocked a little bit um so i have a teeny bit of zinc inside teeth powder but you don't want zinc to be the ingredient that's actually trying to remineralize your teeth um there's other things that use actually like really toxic things in their production um there's nano hydroxyapatite I I don't really at this point I'm not going to pursue nano hydroxyapatite. I think nano powders in general aren't really biologically compatible. Um, you know the nano particles uh, aren't necessarily healthy. Yeah, they might be able to attach tooth enamel, but I'm pretty sure my remineralizers are much more powerful than nano hydroxyapatite because. Um, they're actually kind of what biology uses to remineralize. I don't believe there's any biological processes that use nanohydroxyapatite. And really what we're trying to do is mimic nature. We have to believe and understand that nature actually has solved all these problems in a way better than we can imagine. So we just need to figure out how nature does it and copy that. And nature tends to use amorphous calcium phosphate. They also, nature also uses um, oxycalcium phosphate. Um, so those are two that are good to look at. Um, you know, when I do tetracalcium phosphate, I feel like that's a very natural way. I don't, maybe nature doesn't directly use tetracalcium phosphate, but I think that that's something that couldn't help nature to some extent. Um, it's definitely not toxic, definitely not anything unnatural. Um, so that's where we go with that. So, um. Yeah, and then there's certain things that stick to enamel that can block remineralization. One of those is um, gums, things like mastic gum or myrrh gum. Those gums have uh, aspects that can stick directly to enamel. And what they really have is like carboxyl groups. So you'll have a, a double bond oxygen, and then on off the end you'll have an OH. So that's extremely good at sticking to something like enamel, which is all OH molecules, and it will it will basically displace calcium, um, and it will prevent calcium from sticking uh, to enamel. And there's other things that you've probably heard of, like glycerin, uh, that has an OH molecule. Well, as glycerin has a bunch of OH molecules, and that can also somewhat stick to enamel. It's not it's not as uh, strong and kind of nearly permanent as uh, gums like mastic gum but those OH groups can stick but the stupid thing is is that everybody's like oh glycerin prevents remineralization and they're like oh use xylitol instead well guess what xylitol is exactly the same as glycerin so if you believe that glycerin can stick to enamel which it does kind of um, it does prevent remineralization a little bit and at the very least feeds bacteria that cause demineralization um, xylitol is exactly the same. It's exactly the same. Unless people will say, well, xylitol can't be broken down by bacteria. Mm, maybe not as easily, obviously not as easily as sugar, but it can be broken down basically as easily as glycerin. So there are bacteria out there that do break down xylitol. They will live in your mouth um, and they will break down xylitol and cause acidification, demineralization, yada, yada. So xylitol and glycerin are one and the same. And I have none of those in teef powder because I know the truth and I know it's all BS that xylitol is somehow magically better than glycerin when it is virtually the same molecule. So that's a first little primer on remineralization, the truth uh, behind remineralization. And let me just tell you that oral health is, let me say, I'm going to say 90% bacteria. The other 10% is um, 
your the rest of your physiology, which determines your salivary pH and things. But even the amount of saliva, we know that if you have a lot of saliva, your teeth are going to be healthier than somebody who has little saliva. And that's well known in the medical community. Um, but what's not well known is that the thing that pr makes you not produce enough saliva is actually bacteria in the mouth, bacteria like mycobacterium, which is easily killed with garlic or eucalyptus essential oil. By the way, the eucalyptus essential oil is in teeth powder, and I do monitor dry mouth, and I do tune eucalyptus essential oil to make sure that uh, a lot of saliva is produced um, when you're using te teeth powder. Um, so uh, the point is, is that 90% of it all is your oral microbiota, and the best way to improve your oral microbiota is actually to kill off all the bacteria, and it's very easy to do since we brush our teeth, we can use mouthwash, which I haven't released the mouthwash yet, but I will eventually, uh, an essential oil-based mouthwash. <clears throat> it's easy to keep our mouth clean um, every day, uh, you know, a couple times a day. So there's no reason to um, give up and to um, let the bacteria take over as most, many of, virtually all of us um, have let the bacteria take over our guts and we kind of are at the mercy of our own gut bacteria which we won't be I will release a product at some point called Harmony which will fight uh, these uh, gut bacteria but uh, in the meantime we can fight our oral bacteria and we can win and we can win daily and we don't have to be at the mercy of our oral bacteria dictating our oral health um, so teeth powder is a good way to go um, essential oils research uh, if you go to teethpowder.com to ingredients you can research all the ingredients you can come up with your own product if you want and you can use the essential oil blend as a starting point um, the remineralizer blend is a starting point whatever you want to do um, but the point is that we are helping empower you to have better health thanks for watching nature Acker signing off for teethpowder.com <laughs>